Welcome back, everybody, to part four of our four-part series, a video blog series here for the ACE Report. And um, I'm here with Donna Cuthbert from the Alliance for a Clean Environment. And we've been talking about the, uh, the EIS, the Environmental Impact Study that the NRC did, and what they have, uh, we'll call it covered up. Whitewash was our first uh, program, their first part in the series. And we talked about the uh, environmental threats because of, of water pollution as a result uh, from the nuclear power plant. We talked about air pollution in our third series, and now we're going to talk about in this fourth series actually something that's near and dear to all of us, and that is our personal health and the effect that the uh, nuclear power plant has on us specifically about cancer. So Donna, I know you have a lot to say about this, so we need to get in. This is the most important piece, I think. This is really, really important, Nick, because we've collected enough information that should have told NRC that the impacts from this nuclear plant are not small, they are enormous. We gave all these can all the cancer data um, to uh, NRC in November of 2011, and they ignored Limerick's radiation releases and our really highly elevated cancer rates. That is just plain wrong. As a matter of fact, you know, we gave them the proof that our region has, uh, our costly health crisis was confirmed by four cancer studies, uh, ACE cancer mapping. If you recall, we did the mapping of cancers that- I do remember it, that. It's, it's horrific. I mean, and this isn't even this is doesn't even touch the surface of it because we couldn't even put lung cancers on here because there were so many that they just didn't fit anywhere on here. And this is only from taking out four thousand surveys to homes. Now this didn't go out to everybody in the region, so we've on our surveys we've only captured a fraction of what this really looks like. But there were some streets had so many cancers on them, we couldn't even fit them all on. So really? that was a really important part. But we, we provided them with this. And um, the other thing is, you know, there was state data done in 2003. Uh, state data was reported on by the EPA, and it showed that we have infant and neonat neonatal mortality rates far higher than the state average and even higher than Philadelphia and Reading. That is horrific. And you know, uh, around other nuclear plants, infant mortality rates, when nuclear plants opened up, infant mortality rates went up. When they closed down, they went down, as the same thing happened for certain cancers, particularly breast cancer. So there was that. And, and we have higher rates than the state average or than uh, Philadelphia Reading for malignant tumors, mm -hmm. lower respiratory disease, cardiovascular disease. So now knowing the kinds of air pollution that come from Limerick in addition to the radiation, that's is very understandable why we would have so much. I mean, when you're higher than a big city like Philadelphia or even Reading, that's saying something, it is isn't saying it? Something. It says a lot. Yep. And our learning disabilities more than doubled the state average from 1990 to 2000. And, and by the way, um, the state was, uh, had a 46% increase. And here we had a 92% increase in learning disabilities from 1990 to 2000. Our poor kids, that's all I can say. And our childhood cancer rates, Nick, they were horrific. Our childhood, I don't know, we talked about this so many times before, but 92.5% higher than the national average and 71% increase in, in um, uh, the county, mm -hmm. Montgomery County, which is the home of Limerick Nuclear Plant. And if you look at the upward trend, that tells it all. When, when NRC tries to say that there is no link, there is definitely a link. If you look at the upward trend from when Limerick opened up, they opened up in 1985. So by the late 1980s, our childhood cancer rates were 30% higher than the national average. By the early 90s, they were 60% higher than wow. the national average. And by the late 90s, they were 92.5% higher than the national average. The other way that they can't deny that Limerick is a major factor in these elevated cancers is the fact that in six communities close to Limerick nuclear power plant in eight of the 11 
cancers, the rates were far higher than the national average. Now, when these rates are so much higher than the national average and the tri-county averages, by the way, when they're that much higher than those averages, that tells you we have a problem here so, with so cancer that they don't have other places. If they don't attribute it to the nuclear power plant, do they attribute it to something else, or do they just totally deny the idea of what you're telling us here? How, I mean, how, wh how would they justify it if, if we know that the power plant's creating some of these things? How do they justify by saying it's not doing that? What is the source if, they, if the power plant's not the source? Well, they're, <clears throat> well, they're claiming that it's coming from um, um, all ki kinds of things that we get can't everybody gets cancer from. Yeah, but the rates are much higher than that's, any other place. That's in the country. why we, they can't defend that. Well, we're not that. We can't be yeah. that unique from other places in the country. That's exactly yeah. right. They're trying to say <clears throat> that it's coming from better diagnoses. Well, that's in, that's ridiculous because everybody gets right, the everywhere same. In the everywhere country, they're in doing the better country. diagnoses. We wouldn't have higher than the national average. Everybody gets diagnosed the same. In fact, for a while, we had a state legislator who was trying to say that uh, it was coming from kids eating French fries and, and potato okay. chips, stuff like Like other kids in other places in the nation. So they make up all kinds of excuses, Nick, but look, it's really simple. Limerick nuclear power plants, major, major threat to us and our region is radiation. Right. The, their routine radiation emissions. They don't even need to have an accident. Their accidents are only, you know, uh, topping on the cake mm -hmm. because the routine radiation emissions are enough to make us sick. They say that the doses aren't high enough, but NRC is it totally ignored. The fact that the National Academy of Sciences beer a uh, seven report in 2005 said there is no safe dose. The Physicians for Social Responsibility President Jeff Patterson said there's absolutely no safe dose of radiation levels. Adding more radiation adds to the health impacts. And he's actually said that they're covering all this up and background radiation is not safe. Just because they're calling it background, it's not safe. Plus, NRC has a nerve making any kind of claims about it because NRC has never done any testing no radiation mm -hmm. testing at Limerick Nuclear Plant. So we're not even so, dealing with the, the cumulative effect of all of this. Heck no, it, they don't like even the, know what the individual radionuclide effect is that's right. coming out of there. So when you take over 100 different kind of radionuclides going into all these routes of exposure, our air, our water, our soil, our food, when you take all of that together, additive, cumulative, and synergistic, you can't deny that a place that that releases radiation routinely and radiation causes cancer, and we have elevated cancer rates, it doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure out well, that there's a link there. Apparently they don't have any brain surgeons on the NRC, or they don't have anybody that, that actually can read the, the tea leaves or know exactly what's going on. We used to have an expression that said that, you know, something can break uh, the straw on a camel's back, right? Right. But now it's the, the new word is the tipping point. And or where are we when it comes to that tipping point where it could tip over and there's not going to be a way to come back from it? We talked about water pollution. We talked about air pollution. Where is the tipping point where we're not going to be able to come back from this? And then what are these people going to say? What's the honor? Oh, I'm sorry we made a mistake. Are they going to take responsibility for it? Are they going to handle all the health, health costs related to something because they, they ignored the problems that are as obvious as anybody can see? No, as a matter of fact, um, we've asked them to calculate the health cost of all the cancers in our, in our region above the national average. We're willing to take credit for just the national average rates, but anything over and above that, mm -hmm. including our childhood cancers, and what the, we costed out the cost for one child with cancer. Diagnosed six months by two years, it was $1.2 million. Multiply that by all the kids we have with cancer so, and so all the, the other people. So the kids are basically the canary in the coal mine. Uh, that's right. right? That's and when right. you think about it, Our because, children okay. are, are the most impacted victims of limerick well, nuclear because if plant. You, I mean, you might be able to say adult behavior and lifestyle those might create some of this stuff, but kids don't have those things. No, that's and right. And French fries aren't going to do it. I'm sorry. No, that's that, not no the exactly. Everybody, that. all the kids eat them. Yeah. You know, so so if if that was the cause, the cancer rates would be the same. And if kids everywhere. are getting cancer, there's something that's got to be alarming to all of us. 
we might understand living a long time and adults getting cancer, but our children shouldn't be. And the, and the increase in the cancer rates for children is just alarming and unbelievable to me. And for, and for the grown-ups. Right. I mean, from 85 to 97, looking at the cancer increases, it's shocking. I mean, uh, thyroid cancer went up 128 degrees, and on down the line we'll have a graphic on on the screen that'll show the alarming cancer increases after Limerick started operating. We think there's a reason for that because just looking at thyroid cancer, 128% increase in that time, that's huge. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the, um, the thyroid higher than the national average rate for 98, 99, and 2000, 75% higher than the national average in thyroid cancer. And, and we're here I mean, in 2013, so right. we're looking at those numbers being alarming, but it's now 2013. So uh, what's been happening since then till now? We know about the cumulative, uh, you know, synergistic and effects that these things have. So, you know, we cannot deny this. And yet the common, the common denominator here, Donna, are three initials. NRC. Right. 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 They're the ones that are stopping willful blindness uh, uh, right, exactly. and, and regulatory negligence. That's what we're dealing with here. And we're dealing, I mean, it's, you know, this is horrible, but I mean, to me, these people that are making these decisions to let this go on in this community after they see what's happened, they should be arrested. This should be criminal. I mean, in my opinion, honestly, because why we shouldn't look. Limerick's putting out radiation. We don't have a choice. We were never asked if we wanted to be poisoned with radiation in everything we say we do. Nobody was was ever asked that question, right? Do you want to do you want this nuclear plant here and it's going to radiate you every day? Whoever said that? Nobody. No, we but were. and there are some smoking guns we gave uh, NRC that should have made them stop and take notice. Mm -hmm. Strontium-90 is one of those. It's not natural even to our environment, a kind of radiation. And, you know, it, Exelon's own reports to NRC show that Strontium-90 is released from Limerick. It's in the water, soil, milk, and vegetation by their own testing. The RPHP tested our kids' teeth, remember? For, right. And Tooth Fairy. Tooth Fairy Project, mm -hmm. uh, the Radiation and Public Health Project. Strontium-90 is at some of the highest levels in the nation in our children's teeth. So that is a link, if you ask me. And by the way, I would recommend that anybody wants to know more about those can the cancer links and nuclear plant radiation would read um, The Radioactive Baby Teeth, The Cancer Link by Joseph Mangano. It's a fantastic book, well written and easy to understand. It shows how uh, cancer rates skyrocketed. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, if I remember in some of the shows we've done in the past that, that strontium-90 is only found in two sources, nuclear bombs when they explode those into the atmosphere right. and nuclear power plants. Right. And that's the kind of, uh, that's the kind of outrageous statements NRC makes. We, bring, we brought this up several years ago and their comment about the strontium-90 is well, our strontium-90 here is from old bomb testing. Really? Really. I mean, you would think that they tested the bombs right here. I was going to say Potsdam. they tested the bombs in Potsdam. That's why our kids have some of the highest levels in the nation, right? I mean, this is Limerick releases strontium ninety all the time into our life support systems, and it's in our kids. And we're to believe that these levels of strontium ninety are coming from bomb testing. I mean, that's that they, they listen. They're just not credible. So, in all the bomb testing that was done back in the '60s, has all accumulated right here over Pottstown in this area. So that's why we have higher rates because of old bomb testing with strontium. Well, they did the same thing with radioactive iodine. Right. If you remember, in 2011, um, they tested 66 uh, cities for their water for radiation in the water. Philadelphia had some of the highest levels in the nation. Well, guess what? Limerick discharges iodine-131 into the Schuylkill River. Um, Philadelphia is only 21 miles downstream. Exelon's report, own report confirms it in the water and the sediment. And um, EPA says that nuclear power plants are the major source of iodine-131. Um, and they're trying to blame it on the urine 
from Philadelphia hospitals, like other hospitals in the cities in the nation, don't. I, have, I don't even want to touch that metaphor at all. Don't even go there. Don't I'm not even, even going to go there. I'm not going to. But we just have one minute left. But that's the ridiculousness. So, so, uh, look, if we have if we have one minute we left, we literally have one minute. You all right. Tell people what they should be doing. We sh they need to contact us to help close Limerick. Just tell us that's what you want to do because closing Limerick will reduce your radiation exposure and it's going to uh, minimize the risk for cancer so if ever there's a reason to close limerick that's it so leave your contact information and any information you might have about cancer in your family friends neighbors or whatever we'd really like to know thank you thank you so much folks uh please watch this entire series one, two, three, and four, because they're all interrelated to each other. And continue to watch the, our, our video blog series here on the Ace Report. This is Nick Lawrence. We'll see you the next time.